Well, good afternoon everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm Peter Cossons, VK3BFG, and my presentation uh, this afternoon is going to be a little less formal in as much as it's a bit of show and tell really, and uh, won't be terribly structured. Um, in Melbourne, um, basically we've moved off uh, 400 megs. Um, 400 megs is uh, still available. Uh, for TV if you wish to use it, but uh, in Melbourne the uh, RTV repeater is, is used for, uh, for that purpose and basically we've only got one channel left on, uh, on that particular, on 70 centimetres. Uh, in other parts of Australia that may be different, but most of us have moved up to 1.2 gigs and higher and in fact all of our uh, input signals are currently on 1.2 gigs. So how are you going to get on 1.2 gigs? Yeah. <laughs> First thing is you're going to need an antenna. And uh, that's my portable antenna. And it's a, it's a Loop Yagi. You'll find the details of this Loop Yagi in the ARRL handbook. It's not that difficult to make, except for maybe the uh, driven element bit. And you're welcome to have a look at that uh, later on. I, I do have some CDs here, uh, a limited amount. Okay. which I'll leave out the front here. On these CDs are, there's a program for designing these loop yagis. There's also a whole lot of resources on ATV, uh, where to get materials, um, where to get modules. So th there's a few CDs here. And I guess it's first in best dress. So for 1200 megs, you're certainly going to need an antenna similar to this one. And basically the... Uh, the Luke Yagis are uh, found to be A, easy to build, B, fairly tolerant for a uh, SHF antenna, and uh, you can make them longer. This one's uh, just uh, a few elements so that I can stick it in the car. The one that I use at home is uh, probably about double that. No. <laughs> what you've got to do is... Uh, You've got to cut up these 12 uh, mil bits of aluminium and you bend them around a beer can basically. <laughs> and uh, I've gone to the trouble with my antenna of using stainless steel uh, uh, bolts everywhere and I'd recommend that for any antenna actually. The cost of uh, stainless steel is so low really compared to say brass or, or normal steel. Uh, stainless steel is really good. So an antenna like that is going to be uh, pretty important. The other option is if you just want to do some experiments uh, and we're going to uh, set a DX record this afternoon because we're going to transmit from here over to there. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to transmit on uh, 1.2 gigs and we're going to transmit on 10 gigs and we're going to set the kind and 10 gig record uh, of about 30 feet. But a little antenna like that, it's a little, uh, little Yagi, it's got a little gamma match there. The gamma match is made out of a little bit of hard line actually. Uh, you'll find uh, little antennas like that on the internet and uh, just for experimenting around you know if you wanted to transmit across the kite and race course do it easily with one of those no trouble at all in fact I've done it um, I've done some outside broadcasts at Moorabbin uh, Airport and I use that that antenna basically so they're the kind of antennas that uh, you use for 1.2 gigs and uh, you know pretty obviously they're uh, they're nice and small the antenna I'm going to use for the demos here uh, is this one here. It's, it's just another one of those. Uh, this one I've actually taken Aero Mobile. Um, I'm a private pilot and uh, on occasions, in fact, um, we uh, flew around Melbourne a little while ago and uh, transmitted 1.2 gigs around Melbourne and uh, people were reporting uh, absolutely noise-free pictures as I came in the land at uh, Essendon. So uh, that was the antenna they used in the, uh, in the aircraft. I kept telling the guy who was holding in the back seat not to, not to point it through my head because uh, basically you don't want to be uh, radiated with uh, you know, a few watts of 1.2 gigs. And uh, that's one of the warnings that I'd, I'd have to give to everyone if you consider going up to those sorts of frequencies. Um, basically the RF fields off the end of antennas is fairly high. Um, and 
you know, your normal two metre and your HF antennas, you don't get your head in the in the way of those things because they're on the top of a mast and they're out of sight, out of sight and out, out of mind. But basically, with ATV, sometimes you can be uh, very local. So the guys that are actually sitting in the front row, I don't recommend that because I'm going to be <laughs> I'm going to be squirting one watt of 10 gigs across there. So uh, you know, <laughs> you might get you might get you might get sterilised. <laughs> okay. Um, that's actually cycling through some stuff. But that's actually a uh, up um, uh, a RTV repeat. I'll just leave that running in the background. The options that you've got for transmitters, um, basically, many kits in South Australia uh, is a very good source of uh, PCBs, and uh, they 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 can supply uh, just about everything from. Uh, a, a very small exciter, right up to uh, maybe 18 watts of, uh, of RF. And if you go down below, you find Alan XPD down there. It can supply you amplifiers that will run up to about 18 watts. Well, no, up to about 70 watts actually. So mini kits is uh, is an option. Another option is Comtech, and basically uh, Comtech and all the information on Comtech is on those CDs. But that's a, that's a Comtech module. Matter of fact, if you do a search on the internet and just search for Comtech, that will come up. That, that's the module there. And it, it's, a, it's basically a, a ready-to-go module, except that um, from a TV point of view, it, it's, uh, the quality is not all that good, and there's a whole range of mods that are on the CD there that you need to do to make it... Uh, oh, look, it, it's OK. It, it's, it's a domestic type. <laughs> Uh, sort of scenario and you can make it very very professional. For example there's a little board here, that board is a pre-emphasis network, I've got a video amplifier here to in increase the video level and I've actually taken their, uh, their uh, microprocessor out and put my own microprocessor control for the phase lock loop uh, with an LCD display uh, and all of that is, is uh, nothing to do with Comtech, the Comtech module is just that simple. Comtech, yeah. It does, yes. But but it's basically little uh, these little switches here, uh, and the modification that I've done is, I can I, I, I can dial up any frequency with a with a stepper, and also I've got the frequency readout there, so I know exactly what the frequency is. I just changed it. I didn't mean to do that, but anyway, that that will be all right. So that, that's a, a very good option for, uh, for ATV. That gives out about 80 milliwatts. And if you get one of uh, their mini kits, uh, little RF amps, uh, and also the 18 watt amp, you're up, you're up to 18 watts. That's basically an 18 watt amp that died on me. Um, if you run ATV, um, you, you need this on a fairly substantial heatsink, and you need to uh, fan the heatsink as well. But you can run them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no trouble. But you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to run them just with a diecast box. So you can see it's just a it's just a block amplifier uh, with a PCB, and, and certainly that kit's available from many kits. Um, if you look at the kits available from the United Kingdom, you'll find they're a lot more expensive for the same thing. So that's a mini kit's uh, 18 watt amplifier, and that one can drive one of Alan's uh, 70 watt amps if you if you really want to do that. The uh, the final thing before I, sh I show you some actual live video, uh, this is my if I can, I'll just unplug plug this. This is my 10 gig system. And you might ask, what, why is it in this black box? Well, this black box has got um, a couple of u bolts and it actually clamps to the back of that uh, stand over there. So, in fact, I can get my, my 10 gig uh, amplifier basically connected to the uh, to the dish very, very uh, easily and with a very short piece of uh, coax. For this afternoon's demo, I'm going to use this little antenna. Uh, which again is available from Alan down below. That's a, uh, a log periodic. I think it's good from about uh, 2 to 11 gigs, this one. Uh, it's, when I say good, it's, it's okay to 
Oh, look, you can transmit across a kind of race course, but it's not a trouble. So that's why this black box is like it is. But that's um, mini kits multiplier. That's a by six multiplier, and you can drive directly off a Comtech module or directly off one of mini kits. Uh, you know, straight into the multiplier. Uh, about a milliwatt in gives you 10 milliwatts of uh, 10 gigs. Now, 10 milliwatts of 10 gigs into a dish like that, and you've got a, a, a very realistic transmission system. You can transmit many kilometres with 10, 10 milliwatts. However, this system also has a, yet another amplifier in it that brings it up to about 1 watt. And uh, whilst I, I, I sort of jest a little bit, one watt at 10 gigs into a, a dish, you definitely don't want to put your head in front of, in front of that. So I'm not going to use the dish today, I'm going to use the dish for uh, receiving. So that's my 10 gig system. So we'll just run through all of these um, and give you a look at what they look like in actual fact. That's okay. It's off. Get that around there. So that, that's my drive from, uh, from the Comtech module. I've got two Comtech modules. This one's my 10 gig one. Um, the reason for the black box on the top there is that because we're doing a by 6 multiplier, I've actually got to reduce the video level by 6 and the audio level by 6. So instead of uh, having your standard 1 volt peak to peak video, I've got to put one sixth of a volt into the Comtech module because we're going to multiply by six and it's all FM. So it's basically to uh, get the deviation back. So we've got that little reduction box uh, on the top. On the receiving side, um, if you're receiving 400 megs, most standard TV receivers uh, auto-tune now down that far. Matter of fact, they, they, they seem to tune from... Uh, Oh, very, very low uh, VHF, right up to UHF, absolutely continuously. So, um, to receive ATV on 400 megs, you probably need, um, you know, a pretty good antenna, and maybe uh, a preamp. But those sorts of things have been around for a long time. In terms of uh, up further, uh, over there is a, a standard satellite receiver. It, that's a fairly old one. Um, probably if you walked around here you would have found some sat receivers uh, for sale. Matter of fact, uh, when I was at Wyong back a couple of years ago, they are giving them away. Um, so they're, they're, they're not very expensive. They're analogue receivers though, they're not digital. And that's what we basically use for uh, SHF. They tune from uh, about 800 megs to about 2000 megs. So that's, for those of you around in the old two metre days, you remember the tunable IFs that we used to have, which was just a HF receiver with a converter in them? Well, basically that's what we're using over here. So, Britt, I'm going to have to get you to move. C can, you, can you photograph from here? <laughs> OK. For the first little demo, uh, that's my antenna. That's my 1200 meg antenna. And basically that's what I use in the ham shack just to monitor locally. It's just a, obviously just a little, uh, a little quarter wave. And the SAT receiver is just feeding into the standard receiver um, on channel 1 actually, the old VHF channel 1. So let's fire up some of this stuff and see what happens. Oh, you've got a problem. <laughs> I'm going to be moving all over the place. Okay, what have we got first here? Yeah, that one looks okay. It's okay. Okay, that's uh, online now. That's uh, that's 1250 megs across there, and you can see that just me just moving around uh, alters the picture, and, and that's very classic of television. You all know from uh, uh, you know sort of uh, setting up your, your TV antennas that television is quite strange. It sort of depends on where you put the aerial as to whether you get a picture or not. I can I can move there and I get a picture, and, and I move in between and and I don't. Possibly not quite. Ah, oh, that's okay. Yeah. So that's the mini kits. That's the mini kits amp uh, running. There we are. Just hold my hands like that, and everything's okay. Of course, if 
if the transmitter was the other side of the, uh, the race course, we wouldn't be uh, having these, these kind of uh, problems nearly as much. It would be quite, quite directional. Let's get, a bit, let's get a bit of live TV on there. Okay, we should have something happening there. Oh, yeah, I can see that. It doesn't look too bad. So that's the mini kit system here. You see that, yeah, the picture's uh, quite reasonable. Um, it does need a little bit of assistance to make it uh, uh, somewhat. Uh, Perhaps better than what it comes as, as uh, straight out of the, uh, the kit system, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad. The Comtech module is inferior as it comes uh, as you buy it, sort of just straight from the shop, if you like. Um, after after you've done all the surgery on it and, and all the surgeries on that CD there, uh, it does come up very very well. The Comtech modules. At home I used uh, a system that was developed in South East Queensland. Uh, that one is also uh, excellent, although uh, basically not available. I won't, uh, I won't put the Comtech module on uh, because it, to you it will look pretty much the same as what that one looked like. But just for the, uh, for the effort, let's transmit some 10 gigs across and set the kind and 10 gig record. Okay, what have I got to do here to get this one running? That one's okay. Now you're going to find that 10 gigs is really sensitive to where you've got the antenna. And in fact, because people have come in here, and this, is, this has got the droop a bit since I said it, uh, you'll find that the picture will be there or not there and I'll go and move the dish just a whisker and, and it'll be there, not there. It, it's very critical. For this particular situation, we use a standard LND. You can, you can go to the local satellite shop and buy that. 30 bucks for the dish, full azimuth ele elevation control, beautiful. And the LNB, I uh, forget how much it is, they're not much either. You need to get an LNB with a local oscillator that will bring your 10 point, in my case 10.4 gigs, back in anywhere into the range of the uh, satellite receiver. So you can't just go and buy any LNB, you've got, to, you've got to go and buy an LNB that has a local oscillator that will put you um, basically within that range of the satellite receiver. The satellite receiver has its own power supply. Basically it goes up the spout through the coax and uh, it powers the LMV directly. In fact that's how they all work. Basically it's power up the, spout, uh, up the spout. You'll notice also the noise level will come up a little bit more than what it was before. And that's because uh, the LNB is adding its noise to the overall comm system, which is quite normal. The multiplier, as I mentioned, is uh, readily available from, uh, from mini kits and it's not that hard to, uh, to construct. You'll notice the S meter there has come up, it's sitting about a, a third scale there. That's basically the noise contributed by that uh, LNB up there. Okay, we might uh, just put that in there for a starter. My frequency is 13, 1301 there. 
1301, basically by 6 gives you the 10.41, which is the frequency that we're using in Melbourne. And, uh, oh, it's gone off the air. Basically, uh, uh, up at RTV, all we've got is one of those, an LND. We just stuck it up the mount mast, as is, and that's the antenna, and, and it works. You can wander around Melbourne, and you need line of sight for 10 gigs, of course. But just with that LND up there, um, 10 gigs is on. Anyway, let's see if we can fire 10 gigs up here. You ready to be sterilised? <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Okay, I tell we've got fire in the hole there. <laughs> yeah. Just have to tune this uh, slightly differently. I know it's there, that's it, but it is really critical on the dip. In fact, if I put my hand in front of the LMB, you can see that yeah, it's actually coming in there. And it is really critical. I've, I've transmitted across the backyard quite a few times and I've, I've, I've found the same problem. And, and basically you get lots of, lots of interference, but it, if you take this dish and we put it the other side of the kite and race course, it would be absolutely perfect. It, it's just having trouble uh, with, with the... A, there's about a watt coming out of that, and the dish is extremely sensitive. And you see there, I've probably just got it right, but if I just move away, it's not right. But, and that's one of the characteristics of, of 10 gig in dishes anyway. Basically, you, you, you only move the dish maybe that, mu that far and you, you, you've lost the signal. So getting on top of a mountain and looking for a signal is a hell of a lot of fun because you've got to find the thing. And probably the way to do it is to take the LNB out of the dish first and then just use the LNB and see if you can find a signal or just use one of those... Uh, little log periodics and see if you can find any semblance of a signal and then basically hone in on it. There you are. You can see that you, know, you move just that far, see? Signal starting to go. It's a whole lot of crap there and uh, just there. As you move further away it, it, it is less critical. So that was basically using a Comtip unit. I'll just stick the camera in, see if we can get a see if we can get a, a picture on 10 gigs. That's live. My camera's got a habit of turning off here. Yeah, just did. Here we go. Ah, not too bad. Uh, I can see, you see the little bit of tearing there? That's pretty typical of 10 gigs. Um, the errors that are in the system, all the errors are multiplied by 6. So uh, basically to, uh, to have a really high quality 10 gig system, you really need a driver that's uh, a better quality. And if you have a look at RTV's output on 10 gigs, or the, you know, basically when somebody's inputting on 10 gigs, you'll find the quality is pretty argy-bargy. But it's there. I mean, it's basically using fairly simple technology. So I've got you guys as a witness. I claim now the 10 gigahertz kind of record. Thanks for your attention. You're welcome to have a look. And there's a, a CD left. Uh, we're about to go digital. We are about to go digital. Yes.